What's going on guys? It's Steve. I am very, very saddened by what happened last night. Well, not saddened. It was, first of all, that was the best game of the night. One of the better games of the season. Unsurprisingly, Melo always has the best games of the season. I think he has like already three game winners or whatever. But last night was an epic game, okay? Melo missed a three, right? First of all, Melo and DeRozan were going at it in that fourth quarter. But anyway, Melo missed the three. He got his own rebound. He kicked it out to Courtney Lee. Courtney Lee hit it, gave us a one-point lead. We were down by two. I don't remember the exact score. We were down by two. He hit the three. One-point lead. DeRozan comes and isos on Derrick Rose at the, uh, at the right shoulder. He hesitates going like he's going to turn left. Uh, for a spin move, jump shot, but he turns right, right over Derrick Rose, and Derrick Rose didn't jump. I think if Derrick Rose would have jumped, he would have blocked the shot, but again, you know, that's just great defense. We had some really bad calls at the end, though, like that foul on DeRozan was some BS. Derrick Rose was straight up on that, but it's all good um, when DeRozan hit all three free throws, but it, it, it's all good, okay? You know, it was, it was an incredible game, okay? And Melo, he had a wide open shot, you know, and he just missed it. Things happened. It was a great game, though. But this is why I'm saddened about last night. I'm not saddened about the New York Knicks. What I'm saddened about are the, is the Toronto Raptors. The Toronto Raptors are having such a great season. Well, they were until DeRozan got injured. They fell to the fourth seed. And now Kyle Lowry is pretty much done for the season. Very, very disappointing. What does this mean? Kyle Lowry and DeMar DeRozan should have been in the Eastern Conference Finals with LeBron James. It opens the window now. It could either be, it's obviously, it's probably going to be Boston or, you know, another team if they decide they want to make the eighth seed. Uh, I'm not going to say any names, but uh, hopefully, you know, you guys can catch the hint when I make these hints. But on a serious note, very saddened by Kyle Lowry's injury. They were having such a great season. DeRozan had a historic scoring start to the season. Uh, so many 30-point games at the start of the season. It hasn't been done since Michael Jordan. Uh, they were second seed, had one of the best records in the NBA. Midway through the season, DeMar DeRozan gets injured. And then Kyle, he comes back, and now Kyle Lowry's injured. And they just got Serge Ibaka to help Jonas Valanciunas. So it's a, overall, it's just a very, very sad situation for the Toronto Raptors. It's a very sad situation. But it opens up the doors, and this is why I say this. Also, let's not forget about the Cleveland Cavaliers. They just signed DeMar DeRozan, and they are about to get Andrew Bogut. Oh, by the way, in my statistics class, I met some guy that's on the basketball team. Um, we became mad cool. We were just talking about ball for the entire hour and 15 minutes that we had to sit there in that whack-ass class. But that's the class with the crazy teacher that didn't allow her children to grow up with TV, and she, she puts us in the groups every day. That's, that's the same lady. Okay. Anyway, so we're talking about ball, and uh, I was I was about to ask him if he wanted to be in a video to play me one on one to see where my skill level is because he plays Division Two basketball. He's averaging 16 points per game, seven rebounds. If you guys want me to, I'll ask him to be in a video, and if he says yes, I'll play him one on one. And if I get my motherfucking ass kicked because of you guys, I'm gonna be very disappointed, very sad. But I don't think I'm gonna lose. I think I can beat him one on one. He's big though. He's like six seven. He's a big guy, man. This is like 6'7", 230, something crazy like that. Anyway, the Cavaliers just signed Darren Williams. They are about to get Andrew Bogut. What does this mean? Even more depth for the Cleveland Cavaliers. Now they have even more depth. There is nothing you can do to slow down this Cleveland Cavalier team. There is absolutely nothing anyone can do to slow down the Cleveland Cavaliers. If you think about it, Darren Williams, it's not like he's just some scrub. Darren Williams used to be an MVP candidate player with the Utah Jazz, and he should have stayed his ass in Utah. He should have never went to the Nets. But he used to be an MVP candidate player. He used to be a freaking beast. He There was at one point in time, he was having like 23 and 12, and people were saying, wait a minute, he might be better than Chris Paul and Steve Nash. You know, that was almost 10 years ago, but he has the experience as that guy, you know, as, as that main guy. He knows what to do. He, he's been in that situation before. And to be honest, I think he is a great backup point guard for the Cavaliers. Have Kyrie to learn from an experienced great point guard in Darren Williams. 
all right? He may not be an all-time great because his, his greatness was short for like five, six years, and then he just got injured and things like that. Uh, but still, you know, he, he, he had a great run, better run than 95% of NBA players ever do, and he led the league in assists and, you know, just steals and doing his thing. You know, he's, he was clutch. He, he's doing his thing. You know, so I think it's a great pickup. If they can get Andrew Bogut, the rebounding, this is why they should have signed Carmelo Anthony. If they would have signed Melo and got Bogut, oh my freaking goodness. Woo! But I agree with what Skip Bayless had to say about this. There are no excuses now for LeBron James. If he loses, there is no excuse. And I agree 100% with him. And that's, that's the one time I actually agree with Skip when it comes to him talking about LeBron James. I agree with him. You know, there's no excuse because LeBron, Kevin Durant's record against you is like 3-13. and 13, Or like 4, actually I think it's like 4-16, and seven, 16, something like that. 4-5-16. or five and 16. Okay, you always outduel Kevin Durant. Okay, there is not one player in NBA history that has a positive record against you. Maybe Stephen Curry does. Uh, I don't know about that. But I think he had one. I don't know if he still does. He might. Uh, if, if he does, I think it's like one game above 500. I think he's like seven and six against LeBron, something like that. Maybe more. Who knows? But there's no excuses if LeBron James loses again. There's no excuse that can be made in the book to excuse a loss to the Golden State Warriors. LeBron's going to have to do his thing. Kyrie's going to have to do his thing. And Kevin Love's going to do, do his thing. Now, hypothetically, if someone gets injured like a Kyrie or a Kevin Love, then there's an excuse. But barring out um, injuries, if they're all healthy, there's no excuse whatsoever. So, as of today, February 28th, Tuesday, 2017, your boy Steve has the Cleveland Cavaliers defeating the Golden State Warriors in six games in Cleveland. This time they're going to win it in Cleveland in six games. That's my NBA Finals prediction. LeBron's going to average 30 points per game, 10 rebounds, 9 assists. Kyrie's going to average 26 points per game. Kevin Love's going to average 18 and 10. Darren Williams is going to do his thing. Kevin Durant's going to do his thing. Curry's going to do his thing. Kevin Durant's going to average 31 points per game. Stephen Curry's going to average 27. Klay Thompson's going to average 19. And Draymond Green's going to average 3. It's been your boy, Steve. I'm out. Remember this video when the finals come. I'm out. Peace.